Welcome to the first installment of the player analysis for the 2023 NRL Fantasy season. We have our hooking guns that we're going to be going through today. There are nine of them. What we're going to be going through here is a pros and cons list for each of those nine players. And if you think you should pick them up on your side, I'll be able to help you determine that. We're going to kick it off with Damien Cook, who was the best scorer by far. 6.1 points. He was better than Harry Grant was in the hooking position at 945k. Averaging 66.2 there. Some pros for him. Obviously, having the highest average is super important. If you can get six points better in each of the positions, you would obviously win NRL Fantasy. You have to pick and choose where you want to spend that money. So that's the biggest thing here. With almost 90K difference between Cook and Grant, you could use that money elsewhere to get that six points. Could you find some more value elsewhere? That's going to be your biggest decision here. Obviously, with a new coach, no Bennett anymore. Cook did play a different role and that allowed him to run a little bit more which we is something we we're missing for a couple of years there and that allowed him to get near this highest average obviously in a great team the Rabbitohs he did a lot last year they started pretty slowly he still scored amazingly so it doesn't really matter how they're going he's not one of those flat track bullies that's going to score really well against the top bottom eight teams if the team's got not going so well it doesn't matter too much so there will be some games where he can get 100 with a couple of tries if they are dominating but he can score well in any way, shape, or form. So that's another pro for him. Obviously, at the moment, there's, he's going to be having a little bit more of a smaller origin role. With him getting a little bit older, they're splitting the minutes between him and Abby Corusau. Not because of his age, but more because of how well Abby Corusau has been playing. So that smaller origin role, I think, gives him a little bit more chance of playing around that buy period around origin there of playing some bigger minutes for the bunnies than if he was to be playing 80 minutes you see what happens with teddy and these types of players that it's hard for them to back up for the roosters or you know, any other player backing up for their respective clubs during that time so i think that's a pro for him some of the cons i see with damien cook is the fact that he has a super high price at 945 and probably no upside there at 66 i don't see him improving on that can he get to that 66? He sure can. Can he average 62? I think there's a great chance of that as well. So I definitely think there's a little bit of an issue there. And the fact that he's getting that little bit older, like I said. So if you want to go for someone who's 90K cheaper, I think Harry Grant is a great option there. Obviously at 857K, averaging 60.1 last year. He gets a pretty well an increased role without Smith there. That's Brandon there. And obviously the veterans, Kafusi and the Bromwich brothers, both leaving. We also see him having a bit of an opportunity to carry a little bit more of the load with Pap coming back from an injury, which is obviously a bit of an issue uh, for him. He's struggling a little bit that six months into it and he's still not running properly. So I think a lot of it's going to fall on Harry Munster and also Jerome Hughes. We see Welch come back as well, but I don't think that's going to impact Harry Grant too much, apart from the great offloads that he can provide Grant to scoot through the middle there uh, after he can uh, give them off. So Grant, he scores in so many ways, and I think he should definitely average 60 plus. He runs the ball, he manages to kick out a dummy half. I think that you know the minutes hasn't changed too much. He did definitely play pretty well close to 80 last year. So Brandon Smith playing a little bit through the middle and randomly having little uh, stints at hooker. But Harry, the minutes doesn't change too much. I just think he's gonna be clearly in the top two scorers in this position. I think there is a chance he outscores Damian Cook, but I see them being pretty close together. Uh, the main issues, the only issue I see for Harry Grant this year is the fact that he plays Origin. Simple as that. Harry Grant is probably someone I think I'm gonna be having in my team, or he will be for a lot of the preseason and we'll work it out from there. We'll see what happens uh, in trials and final teams, etc. But Harry Grant, a great option for your side. Reese Robson, so he had a cracking season last year for the Cowboys. Obviously a team that is on the improve that played really well last year. Reese Robson is also a player that is improving. So improving player, great team. I think there's every opportunity that he averages somewhere between 55 and 60. You saw that he had many, many games last year where he went super well, had games of 70, 80, 90, uh, which is what you're looking for for these types of players. Cause there will be games they have a bunch of missed tackles, some lower tackle numbers. Uh, and have an error or two in their game where they do score a 35 to 45. And that really brings down an average when you're trying to get up near that 60 mark. So Robson, the biggest thing for, for him here is he's, you're looking at an 80 minute hooker, which is only about five or six of them in the game. This is changing a lot across the, the last few years, especially with the game quickening up. But he has an average of 59. 
in games where he plays over 70 minutes. So this is all stuff you can look at on footystatistics.com.au, guys, uh, which I'll show in some future videos when we really delve into some of these players. But Reese Robson is a non-origin player, so I think this is absolutely great if you're looking for an alternative for the top two. Alternatively, I think you can pick him up during the buy period. If you're looking to trade out one of those two guys, you're looking to keep them and also add in a second gun hooker, and Reese Robson could be a great player to throw in there. Cons, I could see he uh, could hold his average. And then you're sitting there with the third best hooker uh, who's averaging five to 10 points less than the other two. And you're obviously falling a little bit behind each and every week. Uh, but obviously you would be spending that money instead of it, cook, it on Cook or Grant, you'd spend that money elsewhere to get that average up. But again, you're probably looking to get one of the top two hookers in your team at least. Move to Appy Chorus out. Very interesting one for him. We see him at 718K with an average of 50.3. He moves to the Tigers and he will be the focal point of that team. He has had such a good couple of years and you've, shown how, you've seen how important he was to the Panthers and also to the State of Origin Blues team. Main issues with him, I see, is the fact that he moves to a team that's a little bit unstructured. They probably will improve a fair bit with him there with a few other guys like Bateman, uh, Isaiah Papali, these types of players. But... In an unstructured defense, you usually see, obviously, a lot more missed tackles if he happens to get found out one-on-one, -on -one, which is obviously a very capable, great defender. But he can make a great tackle, and they just step out of it, and he gets that missed tackle. Instead of having someone there to help catch that player, uh, and you know, he can hang on and not get that missed tackle, you see that a fair bit where they just fall off at the end. They actually make a pretty good tackle, fall off, and someone else finishes the tackle for him. That's what I can see happening a little bit for Coruscant. What you see there is an average of 53.7 in games over 60 minutes. So I can't see him moving to the Tigers and playing anywhere close to that full 80. He plays his best when he is playing that 55 to 65 minutes there. So I could see someone like Simkin or another young player like that take over 15 to 25 minutes from Coruscant to really uh, help him have plenty of energy to go out and dominate games. My only issues with him really is the fact that he plays Origin. So you have that with, uh, with the first two guys in Cook and Grant. And with how well he's played over the last few years, he's still only averaged 50.3. So you'd be looking for a guy to have some type of improvement in him. And I just don't see it for Coruscant. Uh, just unfortunately not the best fantasy player that you can pick up on, uh, with how well he plays in actual NRL football. So that's my thoughts on Coruscant. Might be an option at some point of the year, but probably not. Move on to the two Brayleys. So we have Jaden and Blake, respectively. Jaden with the Knights, uh, 695k, averaging 48.6. So this one out of the two I'm much more interested in. I don't think I'll be starting with him, but there's a chance that you could pick him up at some point in the year. I'm sure there's a few that are going to be pretty excited by his last five games of the year last year, averaging in the high 50s. So what you see for him is he averages just above 50 in games where he gets over 70 minutes in the last few years, especially. You know, he averaged 57 in 2021, which was great. What you see there for some pros for him is he does have streaks of really huge scoring games, which you saw at the beginning of 2021. He absolutely smashed it and then did fall away. So a lot of that could have been the workload, could be carrying niggles. And when he does that, he tends to fall off a few more tackles. His attacking stats weren't there, but that is one of his pros is he does have streaks there where he puts up big tackle numbers and also attacking stats there. What you saw is, as I said, that great finish to last year, and he's also a non-origin player. So... Bradley, definitely a solid option in your side. The main issue with him is he can be streaky, which we've seen, uh, but thankfully he's had a fair bit of rest since he had that ACL injury and you know, he started pretty poorly and then finished the year strong for the limited games that he did play. And the other con is he is in a pretty poor team. So can he score an average over 50? I definitely think he can. And if you think he does as well, then he could probably make, your way, make his way into your side. Blake Braley. With the Sharks, so a few people were talking about him to me last year and said that he could he be a good option. I think he is a good option, they were saying, and I just didn't see it. He just doesn't have that big upside that even his brother has more, more than he does. So you end up averaging 48.3. The pros for him is he should keep improving as a player, which he did last year, took that leap uh, and, and had a little bit more attacking flair in him. He's in a good team. So those two factors there could really propel him to be a good player, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen this year or be enough actually so i cons here i just can't see him as a keeper averaging 52 plus i just can't see it he doesn't run enough so meters are low which means his tackle bus numbers are also low if he was to run a little bit more 
he would be able to get a few more try assists. He'd be able to score a few more tries. You're getting uh, what I'm putting down there is I think he won't be able to average more than 50 soup. And to do that, he needs to improve in those areas. And I think he can wait off, wait a bunch of weeks. And if he does show this for you know a month or so, he wouldn't have gained too much in price, maybe a 740 or something like that. And you could pick him up if there's an injury or something like that to one of your other players. All right, we have three to go, guys. Nine players in total here. Jeremy Marshall King with the Dolphins. So he moves from the Dogs there, 677K and an average of 47.3. My main issue with him there is that average. He had he went up in improved in massive leaps and bounds last year, and you would expect him to average more than 50. Unfortunately, he did not do that. So pros are, I see him as improving as a footballer. It's a massive improvements last year. And also potentially a new team with a new attacking role. My main issue with him is that he has a Wayne Bennett coach team. And we know what happened with Damien Cook for a few years there when Wayne, Bennett, when Wayne Bennett was there. Much more of a role of distributing it out to guys like Cody Walker and Adam Reynolds and getting it right out to guys like Luttrell and also Alex Johnston. So does that happen with Marshall King? Does that limit his attacking role? Does it limit his running? Does it limit his kicking out of dummy half? I'm not exactly sure. So potential pro is that he could have a new role and he might be the focal point. We don't actually know, but I think we need to see that in trials and in the first bunch of games. So it'd be very tough to pick him up straight away. As I said, his attack and kicking meter stats are super low. So that's a big con, I think, for him. I see a similar or worse quality of team. So I don't see any natural enhancements or improvements from him moving to the Dolphins from being at the Dogs. Most of us would expect the Dolphins to be in the second half this year of the ladder. And that's completely fair. So I just don't see him being able to average more than 50. There's way too many unknowns at this stage of the year. Okay, we move to Reedy. Reedy Marnie. Obviously, most people know how much of a tough time it was for me owning him last year. If I started with Cook instead, you know, that 20 extra average was just crazy. You didn't have to make any trades. Just kept him all year. That's the big, uh, yeah, the best thing about picking one of those top guys is that you most of the time don't have to trade them out at all if they can manage to play the majority of the year, you know, with coming in and out for Origin, for example. But 659 average at 46.1. So he's priced accordingly. The pros for him, looking like an 80-minute roll, which I said is pretty rare. It's probably about five guys that would do that. He moves to the dogs and he has a new role. How is that going to play? How is that going to be? I expect him to have an increased role at the dogs compared to what he had at the Eels, which was more of a directing, passing role, uh, controlling that game, being a leader and getting it out to Brown early, getting out to Mitch Moses. He only has, no offense to Kyle Flanagan, he has Burton at his disposal on the left. Flanagan improved, props to him in the second half of last year, but he isn't the same player of, of Mitch Moses there. So, I can see him running the ball a bit more. I can see him kicking a bit more at a dummy half and just getting involved a fair bit more than he was at the Eels. You're getting him at a floor price. I can't see him scoring much lower than a 44, 45 average there. And he definitely has potential upside. He scored an average of over 60 for the Eels uh, in 2021. Can he get back to there? I don't think so. But can he average over 50? I think he clearly can. So there's not much of a risk there in picking him up. The cons for Reed, the new team, definitely an unknown. And he was very, very poor last year. Obviously, he was solid actual football, but fantasy, very, very poor. Last one, Lockie Croker, 639K, 44.7 is the average we're looking at here. Pros for him, full off season in hooker. He's someone that improved drastically as a hooker the last couple of years since he's been thrust into that role. I definitely think he can improve over this off season and moving into next year. He'd probably want Manly to be a better team. That's a slight issue for me. I think he's a pretty smart fo footballer. He's moved from seven and he's kind of made Hooker his own since he's got into that position. It took a little bit, but he definitely got there. An unknown, you know, maybe worth a little bit of a look in mid part of the season. I think that could be where you look at Croker. I think it's too much of a risk to pick up in round one. Cons for him, too many missed tackles and very low run meters. Very streaky. You saw games last year, we'd get 15s, 20s, 30s, and then you'd have 70s and 80s. So too risky for me to start with. But guys, that is the hooker guns for this 2023 season. If you've got any questions, let me know down the bottom and I will be jumping into the middies and the cashies and all the positions as we go through this preseason. But thanks for being here. We'll catch you in the next one.